when we try to understand an ecosystem, we look at the abiotic and biotic factors um, as a way of breaking down the complexity to, to understand what's going on. When we look at the biotic factors, we're looking at all the living things that are in that environment. And um, the distinctive thing is that they're going to be all the plants and animals that are within an ecosystem, and it's the interactions between them, so it's things like the feeding relationships, the competition they experience, or the cooperation they experience, that will um, determine the particular adaptations a species has to be able to survive within the various bi um, biological interactions within that um, environment. Um, when, when we look at what those biotic factors are, there's the soil organisms um, that are often overlooked but are really important in, in the terrestrial systems to um, provide the resources in the soil that the plants then extract out of that soil incorporate into their tissues that are then the food for all the animals that eat the plants or eat the animals that eat the plants. So it's those nutrients that are first uh, made available in the soil that support that whole terrestrial ecosystem. So it's that the health of those soil organisms is, is really important, particularly in agricultural production when we're so concerned about the resources we can take out of it, it's, it's really the health of that system that is of primary importance. Um, we've also got the fungi, um, the other things that are breaking down the plant matter and, and breaking down dead plant matter and making those nutrients um, available back into the soil for um, the soil organisms and plants to be able to, to utilise. And we've got bacteria that um, provide quite a, a wide range of um, tasks in the soil, but they decompose things. They can photosynthesize, they can um, extract nitrogen out of the air um, and they're within all the other biological um, life within an ecosystem so they're within their digestive systems, within their bloodstreams, they're, they're everywhere. So they've got um, quite a wide range of uses and then you've got all the plants that are supporting the food chain within those systems um, by photosynthesizing um, so creating sugars in their leaves that are, that are a food there for, for herbivores that eat those plants or um, for other things that eat those herbivores. And then you've got all the animals. So when we're looking at the food web, we're really looking in particular at all the different feeding relationships within the animals. So what insects and birds and uh, mammals and reptiles and lizards and, and, all, and fishes what, what kind of different animals are within that um, ecosystem and what are the feeding relationships between them. And again, by understanding that, we can um, better design an agricultural system that has a complexity of, of compatible um, animals that um, are not so strongly competing against each other but are more in a cooperative um, cooperative existence depending on how we manage their movement and their interaction with each other. Um, so the other part is the abiotic factors. So these are the factors that are trying to describe the environments of an ecosystem. So and, that, and that's the habitats that the, the, the biotic factors or the living things in that ecosystem experience. And again they're going to adapt in a way that um, best allows them to get the resources they need and to be able to reproduce within the particular um, conditions of that environment. So to, to, to understand the abiotic factors we look at things like the hours of sunshine, so um, how much sunshine does it experience um, at different times of year and that will depend on, on its latitude, so how far away from the equator it is. When you're right on the equator you experience uh, 12 hours of sunshine, 12 hours of darkness throughout the whole year, but then the further away from the equator, which is the middle of the earth, the further away from the equator you go, the bigger the seasonal changes um, between winter and summer. So you get longer nights in winter and longer days in summer. Um, and that will also affect the temperature uh, particular place experiences. So again, when it's nice and close to the equator, the temperatures are pretty consistent throughout the whole year, normally th sitting around 30 degrees Celsius. But if it's further away from the equator, the, the differences in temperature are going to be more and more extreme. And, and as you move towards the poles, they get very extreme indeed. And, and throughout the whole year, it's pretty cold. 
but particularly cold in winter um, and you get big changes from winter and summer in, in the temperatures. Um, elevation is another important factor so that works in a similar way to latitude so the further in height you get from the ocean the more extreme the, the temperature changes are during the year um, and, and also the more extreme the weather normally is um, as well and then you've got things like rainfall so water is, is very important to, to provide as, as a resource to support the plants in particular and in many places rainfall can be a limiting factor so the rainfall of an area can determine what kind of uh, plants in particular um, you can grow successfully in an area without having to extract too many resources from groundwater or from extracting water from lakes and rivers to be able to support that agricultural production. And again to be sustainable we need to um, provide the resources to support agricultural production in a way that will be sustainable long term. So if it depends upon an unsustainable extraction of, of groundwater or from rivers and lakes that's that won't be um, sustainable in the long term then we've got to redesign those systems and, and think a little bit more carefully about the selection of plants and animals that are more in balance with the rainfall and again how we can influence the rainfall of an area by um, the, the, the design of systems that um, humidify the air by um, the water that the, the plants are putting out into the atmosphere. Um, and the distance inland too. So the, the closer you are to the ocean, the more moderate the temperatures are because the, the ocean um, moderates the temperature. It, it results in it getting less hot in summer and less cold in winter. But the further away from the ocean you get, the more extreme those temperature changes get. So it becomes hotter in summer and it becomes colder in winter. And, and that's called the continental or, um, or island effect. So if you are, are close to the ocean, you, 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 it's often called a maritime effect. And the temperature changes are not so extreme. Or if you are further inland, you get a continental effect. And that results in uh, colder winters and, and hotter summers. So it's understanding all of these factors and, and how they naturally um, relate to the context of, of where you're trying to farm that will influence the design of your system. Um, particularly with, with these factors, because we can't really change these factors. We can, we can modify and we can select our plants and animals for our production system to, to our, suit our purpose and to our advantage. But there's not too much we can do as far as impacting the hours of sunshine and rainfall and temperatures. So we're being guided by these factors in particular in the selection of the plants and animals that we um, select for agricultural production that will be best suited to those conditions. And then once we've got an idea of what plants and animals are best suited, we can then select the species that are going to be most productive to us, that have a good market in that region, and that are going to be the most cooperative and, and work together the best um, so that the production of one is not compromising the production of, an, of the other. And that, when you're working with plants and animals in particular, will largely depend on the movement of the animals through that system so that they're not there all the time but you bring them into a system to bring about a certain um, result such as eating down grass or browsing trees or shrubs and returning that plant matter as a manure to the soil to feed it and then you move those um, animals on again so you're managing the movement of those um, animals so that um, you can grow your plants successfully.